Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the draw tight trailer hitch receiver here on your 2016 Ford F-150. So this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like installed on our vehicle. As you can see here, everything is actually going to be hidden behind the bumper, the cross tube that is. The only thing we actually can see is the receiver tube here, which if you'll notice, it doesn't actually protrude past the bumper either. So you're not going to have to worry about hitting your shins on it when you're walking by. Now everything we can see has a nice durable black powder coated finish. Therefore, it's going to help the hitch hold up to rust and corrosion over time, being that it is on the underside of the vehicle. So adding a trailer hitch to your F-150 here, it's going to be a great option, assuming it didn't already come with the frame mounted hitch from the factory, because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. And let's face it, the F-150 is a truck, so you do need a trailer hitch to do all those truck duties like towing and hauling. One thing I would like to point out is that the factory hole in the hitch bumper here, you're no longer going to be able to use that, but that's not a bad thing at all because towing with the bumper really is an idea because you have a fixed hitch height. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch here is going to provide us with a 6,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on our fully loaded trailer. It also has a 900 pound tongue weight rating. That's going to be the downward force on the receiver tube. Now, if we have a really heavy trailer, we can increase these capacities by using a weight distribution system. We have plenty of those to choose from in each trailer, and in which case we'd be increasing the capacity to 10,000 pounds and 1,000 pounds respectively. Now, keep in mind these capacities are for the hitch only, which is tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, it's a good idea to verify the vehicle's towing capacity in the owner's manual and abide by the lower of you two, whether that's the vehicle or the hitch. So in addition to towing, our trailer hitch here can also be used if we want to hit the trails. We could easily attach a hitch mounted bike rack, or if we wanted to free up some space in the bed of our truck here, we could also attach a hitch mounted cargo carrier. We have plenty of those hitch mounted cargo carriers and bike racks to choose from here at each trailer as well. So on the side of the receiver tube, you're going to see our industry standard 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole. That's going to work great with our 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube, we have our safety chain loops. You can see those work great with both the larger clevis style as well as the smaller S-type. So now we got a couple measurements for you guys here. They're going to help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube. And that's going to be right at 19 and a half inches. And that'll be useful when you're selecting a ball mount. That way you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then finally, we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. That's gonna be right at two and a half inches. And that's gonna be useful when you're selecting your folding accessories. That way you can make sure that while they're in the stowed position, they don't contact the vehicle. So in regards to installation, this is definitely something you guys can do at home by yourselves. You don't wanna pay a shop to do this for you. It's very easy with just common hand tools. There is one you may not have, and that's a torque wrench. You can actually rent these from free from most local auto parts stores. Now, let's go ahead and show you how to put the hitch on to give you the confidence to do it at home by yourself. So the first step of our installation, we're gonna come underneath the vehicle here, and on the passenger side frame rail directly behind the bumper, we're gonna have a ground strap attached to the frame with a single bolt. So we need to go ahead and remove that. I'm going to recommend go ahead and spraying it down with a spray lubricant and you can let that sit for a couple minutes to let it work. But then we're going to take a 10 millimeter socket and we're going to remove that bolt. Keep in mind, we will not be reusing the bolt. Once we have the bolt out, we can just pull the ground strap off the frame and let it hang just like so. We need to go ahead and lower our spare tire here. Now the tools you need to do this are gonna be located inside the vehicle. So if you're unsure how to do that, you can refer to your owner's manual as well. So now, we're going to come back to the same location that we just removed the ground wire from. And we're going to see a large hole directly above that. And again, we're on the inside of the frame here, directly behind the bumper. 
So in your kit here, you're gonna get these U-shaped spacers. And what we're gonna be doing is, we're actually gonna be taping this to the frame here, just like so, aligning the U-shape cut out with the hole in the frame. We need to be careful, however, that we don't block the ground screw down below. So we're gonna hold it into position now. I'm gonna take a piece of masking tape and I'm gonna secure on the frame just like so. Once I get it on there in position, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the slot out here of the center so our bolt can pass through when the time comes. So now we're just gonna repeat that same process over on the other side of the vehicle. So next thing we're gonna be doing, we need to take our hitch here. And we're gonna be taking the spacer blocks that look like this that come in our kit. So we're gonna be working on the mounting hole furthest away from the cross beam. And we're gonna be working on the outside of the flange. And what we're gonna do, similar to our last step, we're gonna take our spacer block here and we're gonna tape it to the outside flange here, making sure we line up the hole in the spacer with the hole in our hitch. So I'll just go ahead and take some mounting tape or some masking tape, line that up and then tape it to secure it in position. And again, we're going to take a razor knife or a razor blade and remove the tape from the center of that hole. And if you don't have it quite fully aligned, you can readjust your tape until it's seated properly. And we will be doing this on both sides. So now we're still underneath the vehicle here working on the inside of the frame rail. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back just a little bit or towards the front of the vehicle from the hole we were working with earlier. So this is the hole we're gonna be using. This is our attachment hole and this is the access hole we're gonna use to get our hardware into the frame. So we're gonna take one of the fish wires that come in your kit here so while you're working with these fish wires, it's a good idea to wear safety glasses because these wires can kind of spring on you and you don't want to get poked in the eye. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the coiled end, feed it through the attachment hole, which is on the bottom. We're going to reach our finger into the access hole and pull out the coiled end. Then over the coiled end, we're going to place our spacer block. And then we're going to thread on our carriage bolt. Once we get that threaded on, we're going to shove the spacer block into the frame first. Then our carriage bolt, we're gonna shove in there after that. And then when we pull this wire through, it's gonna pull the bolt through the carriage bolt and through the frame. We'll show you that now. Just like that. But once we get the bolt through the uh, spacer block, we're actually gonna just push this back into the frame for now, just like so. We need to do that on both sides. So next, we're gonna go back to the hole that we started with. We're gonna take our fish wire here. We're gonna stick the coiled in through the hole that we want our hardware to come out with. And then actually on the front side of this flange here, there's another large access hole. We can fish it out. And we'll just simply repeat the same process we did earlier. Stick a spacer block over the coiled end. Thread on a carriage bolt. And then we'll shove that spacer block through the access hole. This one is a little bit tighter. Pull our carriage bolt through there. We'll pull the two together through the frame like so, and then we'll push it back down there for now. And then we'll repeat that same process on the other side. So now with an extra set of hands, we can raise our hitch into position. Now, once we get underneath the vehicle here, we're gonna take the pole wires, and we're gonna feed them through the outside of the hole in, just like so. And then we'll come on the inside and we'll grab both of those wires. So once we have the bolt securing the hitch to the vehicle here, you're gonna carefully use one finger on the bolt and then pull the pole wire off. Then we're gonna stick on our serrated washer. You wanna make sure the teeth are facing the hitch side. So you may need to move that wiring harness up over here on the driver's side. But now we'll just simply thread on our nut and we have three more holes we need to do that same thing on. 
So now we're going to resecure our ground wire with the hitch into position. We're going to be using the M8 bolt that comes in your kit here. Now you can either turn this ground wire end or bend the tab either way. But once we get a nice flat surface there, we can start to thread our bolt in. And once we get that started, we can tighten it down using a 13 millimeter socket. I'm going to take a 15 16 inch socket. Or we're just going to go ahead and snug up all of our fasteners and then we can torque them down to the factory specifications in your instructions. So now don't forget to raise your spare tire back up into position. And that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the draw tight trailer hitch receiver here on your 2016 Ford F-150.